They praised in unison your conquering hand, O Lord. For wisdom opened mouths that were mute and gave eloquence to the tongues of infants. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man had been the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement towards them in the portico called Solomon's portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, you children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us? As if we had made him walk by our own power or piety. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him up from the dead. As this, we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see now and his name has made Bennett strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of both the prophets and that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and convert, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment, and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom, 
whom heaven must receive until the times of the universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old. For Moses said, A prophet like me, the Lord your God, will raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen to all that he may have to say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke, from Samuel and those afterwards, also announced these days, You are the children of the prophets, and the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how gracious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should be care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord, God, how wonderful your name on all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the path of the seas. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they'd come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, Today we have in the Acts of the Apostles Peter preaching from a place called Solomon's Portico. So it seems like the Acts, uh, Luke is the writer of Acts. Luke is trying to make a point of saying where this location is. It's not just the temple area, it's Solomon's Portico. Solomon's Portico is a large area on the east side of the temple. 
This is the second temple, which had been modified by King Herod some years earlier, sort of refurbished, um, and unfortunately would later be destroyed uh, around 70 AD after the Jewish revolt and the Roman siege of Jerusalem. But the Solomon's portico is kind of like, a portico is basically, they sometimes use the word porch. Uh, It's sort of this back area that's quite long that people could use to walk and talk with each other outside of the most sacred areas of the temple where the tabernacle is kept. Um, It's also got big, long, white columns, and it's covered. Um, which is especially to shelter people from weather. We know what it looks like because there is this historian we sometimes talk about, Flavius Josephus, who lived in that period in detail what this stuff looked like. So it's kind of like, it might seem like small trivia, um, but it's interesting today because uh, Solomon's portico, where Peter is preaching and talking about, hey, how can you folks deny the signs that have been seen by you, like you've seen people healed, right? Where is your faith now that you've seen people healed? Why are you so incredulous? Why are you so surprised? We told you Jesus was doing this. Um, Jesus had given pretty much the same speech from the same place in John 5. That could have been a year or less before Peter here has given the same speech. Jesus was saying, Hey, you've seen all of these signs. I've healed people. I've made people whole. Um, Why don't you as yet believe? So it's just significant that this is the same place. But here's the rich part, I think. Here's the part that I think is especially rich. This is Peter, right? St. Peter the Apostle, the fisherman, um, who says, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence. This is Peter saying, you people denied him. How could you possibly do that? Unbelievable that you could deny him. This is Peter. What's he most famous for uh, around the time of the passion of Christ is denying him three times, right? So how do you, how do you get to be this, you know, audacious? How do you get to have this, like, sense now of, okay, now I'm prepared to, to preach to others. I think ultimately what it speaks to is that Peter was actually able to at least come to faith and believe with confidence in the mercy that Jesus taught. That is to say, if you repent the forgiveness of sins, you, you look inwardly at your life and see what's wrong and what's broken and say, I choose anew again, even though I failed again. <laughs> I'm going to follow you, Jesus, and I'm going to keep on this path as best as possible, and I'm going to let my past go. That part is the key that we all need to follow the example of. Don't get so weighed down by these things that have happened that we don't experience the newness of life that allow us to share the good news of Christ. Um, Because Peter could easily just walk into the shadows never to be seen again. But it's his own sinfulness that he preaches and proclaims. It's from that place of knowing how deeply he needs salvation that he can speak to how great salvation is for all. Let us stand and bring our prayers to our loving Father. We pray for the church, that like Peter and all the saints who have gone before us, we may always trust in the great mercy of our Lord Jesus, who always wishes us new life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead us in our communities and society, that they may care especially for the poor, for the oppressed, for the disenfranchised and marginalized. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick for all who seek healing in mind and body or spirit. Pray for those uh, suffering from mental illness and from addiction. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of Felicula Escarilla. We pray to the Lord. 
Let us pause and take a moment in silence to remember all the prayers in our hearts. We praise the Lord. We ask you, O good and loving God, to hear our prayers. We make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying is destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.